Okay, hello guys. My name is Kimia and today I'm going to hopefully uh, teach you how to approach the background information of an argument analysis text. To those of you who um, might not be aware of the importance of the background information, make sure you pay close attention to the next 10, 15 minutes so that you really truly appreciate how relevant and necessary the background information is when you are writing your argument analysis essays. It's quite, it's an absolute gem. I mean, you can't write an essay without it. And I encourage you all to appreciate its existence. It's so, like, we love the background information. It's just fantastic. Um, now, before we get started, I'll just quickly introduce myself. So I graduated VC three years ago in 2018 and obviously studied English during that process. And I was very, I found English very challenging, very, very challenging in that I, I never quite knew whether I was doing well or not, irrespective of my marks. It's just my marks fluctuated quite a bit. Um, when I felt like I was prepared, I didn't do well. When I felt unprepared, I did do well. So it was very confusing and challenging. Um, so if you can relate to that, you are not alone. And really, I wanna say that anything is possible if you set your mind to it, especially for English. You will surprise yourself if you just put in the effort now. And I say this because I, you know, despite feeling quite overwhelmed um, about English during the year of 2018, I ended up doing quite well and received a 50 and a Premier's Award in the subject. So if I can do it, really anyone can. I'm nothing special. Just, just you know, I just worked a little hard and was quite focused when it came to English. So make sure you're really tuning in to, the, to this presentation so you can gain a lot out of it. Okay, enough about me, enough about me. Let's get started. The background information is crucial. You need to read it. And if you haven't, if you weren't aware of that, please, please be aware of it now. If you miss the background information, you will not do as well as you can in your essays. So let's think about why it's important. Well, there are a couple of features of the text that we can actually identify before we even read it. And that is in the background information. So before we even read the text, we can basically guess what the text will look like, what it will contain, things like that. So ideally, and I want to emphasize ideally because um, it, you might not necessarily be able to identify all of these features, but ideally we will definitely find who the author is, what the text type is, um, what the target audience is. I'm going to put a little cheeky S there to, to specify that there may be more than one, hint, hint. Um, the context, as well as the authorial intention. Fantastic. Okay, so five features that we might be able to identify. So I'm just going to put the word ideally here. So if you can't identify all of these, that's not a problem. Just try your best to do it. It may not necessarily work. It really just depends on the background information and what they've included within it. And so let's walk through each of these features and see if we can find them. It's as easy as that. Now, before we do that, I'll read the background information so you guys can um, think about it before I reveal these answers. So, the principal of Spire Primary School writes a weekly message for the school's website. She invites comments, favourable or unfavourable, to be posted after her message appears. 
The principal has been concerned about the amount of packaging waste she has seen around the school. Her message about this concern and a response from one parent are on pages 12 and 13. Cool, that's really helpful. We, we learned a lot about it. And I think really, really obviously what we have discovered is that the author is the principal of Spire Primary School. We don't need to know what Spire Primary School is necessarily. We just need to know that it's a primary school. Therefore, um, the principal is kind of responsible for, for uh, taking care of lots of young children. So they need to be a very trustworthy person. I'll just hint at that right now. And that's, that's really it, nice and simple. The author is the principal of Spire Primary School. How about the text type then? What kind of text is this? Is it a, an article? Is it a newsletter? Is it a speech? Is it um, a radio transcript? Uh, I think this one's also quite quite clear and we can very clearly identify that the text type is a weekly message and it's online. It's a school website, okay? So when we think about the features of a website, we know that, okay, this principle is obviously going to share some information with us. So there'll be a lot, of, a lot of writing, but also the way that the information is presented is important because websites are often quite, you know, aesthetic, they've got a nice format. There are lots of links, hyperlinks, things like that, images. Again, the formatting is quite pleasing to the eye. It's aesthetic. It's easily, it's easy to digest and the information is presented nice and clearly for the online reader. So that's something to consider. We can already guess that the, that the article, this particular text, will have a particular format, a particular format. Next up is our target audience target audience or maybe more than one it's really it doesn't matter if you can't identify more than one at this point but what does matter is that you are able to identify more than one target audience within the text itself okay really if we want to aim for quite a high study score we need to understand that the author is not just targeting one set of people, one specific group of people. They are targeting numerous groups of people within their text, within each argument. Each argument should be framed around a particular target audience. Now, if this is new information to you, that's actually good. You've learned something. If not, please just keep that in mind as you're moving forward. If you're already aware of this, make sure you're actively practicing the skill of identifying several target audiences. Okay, so with that being said, let's identify this one. Who are we targeting? Are we targeting primary school students? Probably not. I hope not. Safe to assume that we're not. Um, but we're targeting Okay, it doesn't even say it here, right? We have to think about it. It doesn't necessarily say it here, but I think it's safe to assume that we're targeting parents. Yeah, I think so. I think that works. Parents, right? Parents. Now, is parents too broad? I wanna ask you guys that question. Is parents too broad? Which parents? What type of parents? Whose parents? You know, we need to really, really clearly identify that. That's a very important skill for um, argument analysis essays is being specific, being specific when we're identifying our target audiences. 
I've definitely been guilty of doing this, but I know that it's it's very common for students to to state that the target audience is, for example, the Australian public or people in the local community or in this case, parents. And whilst that's not necessarily wrong, it's just not um, thoughtful enough. It's not, you haven't thought enough about the specificities of the text. So we can really hone this down. We can specify it much more than this. Okay, so it's parents. It's parents of, um, let me bring it down here where there's a bit more room. Of Spire, Spire, what was it called? Spire Primary School. It's the parents of Spire Primary School kids. Yeah, that's very obvious as well. That's still way too broad. What type of parents? What type of parents are going to be reading the weekly message? We can say they're tech savvy. I actually can't remember if Savvy has two Vs or one, but that's okay. They're, they're, um, they have access to a computer, you know, technologically advanced parents. No boomers here. What else is there? Think about it. Let's just pretend we are parents. What would make you want to read this weekly message? I think it's like parents who are active within the school community. Parents who truly care about um, their student, their, sorry, not their students, their children's school environment. And the integrity of its leader. What do I mean by that? All I mean is that the parents, the kind of parents who are going to keep up with a weekly school newsletter are those that really want to learn more about the person who's leading the school, the person who is um, creating the environment in which their children are learning. That's the specific audience. You might be able to identify a different layer within this audience and you, that's up to you to do if you'd like, but this is just what I've, this is just what comes to mind for me instantly. It's parents who are active, involved, and who care. So it's a bit of a tricky one there. You really have to think. It requires thinking, which is not an easy thing to do. Now the context is um, something I don't think many students think about, but it's well worth identifying. If you're unaware of what the context means, it's just the, the like what's happened in the world of the author to prompt them to write this particular text. So in our case, what's happened within the school that's caused the principal to write a weekly message, to write this particular weekly message. I think we're all, I mean, I think we're all aware that it's quite obvious that the principal's written this article, this text, because they have noticed a superfluous amount of waste, of rubbish within the school campus. Okay, that's the context. That is what has prompted the principal to write this. They've recognized that there's a problem. That's usually what happens. An author will recognize an issue and they will be compelled to write about it in order to cause more people to share their opinion, to persuade people, essentially. I think another layer of the context might possibly be um, 
No, I won't mention that. I was going to say the context could also be related to this idea of inviting comments. So um, the author might be looking for suggestions, but that can also well be, that can also really be related to, um, oh, that didn't work, to the target audience. The target audience are people who want to share their ideas with, with the um, principal. Want to share their thoughts and ideas. Plus create change. Okay. I think I'll erase that and move on to the final part of this little presentation is identifying the authorial intention. This is the trickiest part. This is not easy. And as you can probably tell, if you read the text quickly again, the background information, you can't find the answer to this. The authorial intention isn't clearly, it's not there, it's not obvious. And it's our job to think about it. It's our job to identify it by ourselves based on the information that we have. Keep in mind, this is still just the background information. We haven't even read the text yet. So we are taking a tentative guess, we're taking an educated guess to determine the purpose of our author. Why are they writing this? Why are they writing this? This, the purpose I like to break down into two parts. There's the superficial purpose and the underlying purpose. Superficial purpose is very obvious. If you can really easily think of the author's purpose, then you're probably identifying the superficial purpose. So if you feel like you, you, you're not spending too much time identifying it, then it's not necessarily a good thing. In this case, I can very quickly think of the superficial purpose, and that is to inform parents of the copious amounts of rubbish at school, right? It's really obvious. It's kind of related to the context as well. What has prompted the author to write is related to their intention, but on a superficial level, okay? This is really superficial because it's obvious we haven't had to think about it. And ideally with the superficial um, purpose, what I wanna say here is that um, it's important to, to write about it, but it's not as important as identifying the underlying purpose. So we still wanna say that we are aware that the author um, wants to raise their concerns about the, the, the large amount of rubbish on campus. But more importantly, we are also aware that the author has this more underlying manipulative intention. What could that be? What could that be? Let's think about it. Let's think about what the principal actually wants out of this. Do they want money? Do they want respect? Do they want support to boost their reputation? Do they want power? Do they want to change people's minds? Things like that. This is what I mean by the underlying purpose. This is the more, um, yeah, the more manipulative side of the author. And every author has a manipulative side, um, an insidious side, a more, you know, a cunning side. So let's think about it. The author is sharing her concerns about waste on campus, and she's also inviting parents, as we've written here, inviting parents to share their opinions as well. What this means is that the author wants to appear 
to be a just, respectable, considerate leader who values the parents' con opinions and therefore values the safety plus growth of the students. So really what this, what this um, author is trying to do is related to power, reputation, respect. She is trying to reinforce her sense of power. She's trying to remind parents that she's a good leader. She's a respectful, respectable leader who has a really moral and just fair reputation, okay? How do I know this? It's because she's choosing to publicly announce that she's noticed a lot of plastic on campus. Why is she choosing to do that? She could have just raised her concerns to teachers instead of publicizing it. And the reason for that is because she wants the parents to know that she's an environmentally friendly leader who cares about the environment in which the students are growing. She notices problems, she solves them, she's caring and thoughtful and like a strong leader. And really the purpose of that is to cement her power, to increase her influence and to therefore kind of encourage parents to continue sending their children to this primary school. It's very manipulative and it's very, very interesting. And I hope that's taught you a little something about how to approach the background information. I really um, wish you the best of luck for the rest of the year and take a look at this video whenever you need some sort of um, guidance when it comes to writing argument analysis essays. Thank you so much for listening, everyone and have a lovely day.